Turtle sliders are fun. Any kind of turtle's fun. But they're being harassed by raccoons. How do they keep the raccoons out? I would recommend getting an electric fence. You gotta be careful not to shock myself. It is no joke. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here. I am having a good day. I am building a new uh, Galapagos tortoise cabin for the winter. And uh, yeah, man, I'm kind of sweaty and shirtless and I'll try and keep it from here up. You know, I don't want to get anybody hot and bothered. Just kidding, I'm the only one hot and bothered right now. It is warm, but that's not entirely true. It's kind of cool, but warm in the sun. You don't want to hear me talk about weather, right? You want to answer questions. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week, our special shout out goes to Melissa Todd. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Today's question comes from Darren Lehman, one of our Patreon supporters and one of my bicycling buddies. And he's married to one of my good friends, but he's actually a Patreon supporter. So this is not nepotism. This is me answering one of our supporters questions. And Darren asks, his brother just inherited a house with a koi pond. That's why I'm kind of hanging out over here by the koi ponds or the cichlid ponds, turtle ponds, whatever you want to call them. However, it came with a red eared slider turtle, uh, which is fun. That's pretty cool. Sliders are fun. Any kind of turtles fun, especially these little Asian box turtles. They're cool too. Uh, you can see them kind of milling about here in the pond today, just kind of floating haphazardly all over. But Darren says, or asked rather, uh, they're being harassed by raccoons how do they keep the raccoons out all right i'm going to show you what i do darren and everyone else out there watching um nothing is 100 percent foolproof but at least you can take some steps that will keep your fish and more importantly your turtle safe because as we know raccoons are an incredible incredible predator uh, they're very smart, they're very dexterous with their hands, and they're able to uh, actually scoop out the legs and, and neck and head of the turtles, and they'll just sit there and munch right on them as they're alive. I've actually seen raccoons here eat some of my water turtles where they actually eat the back legs off, and I've got a turtle with no back legs, uh, and we don't want that to happen. Here's one of the radiateds next to a nice uh, healthy poop. But um, basically, guys, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have some kind of perimeter fence around the pond. Now, obviously, this fence is not made to keep out raccoons. It's actually made to keep the turtles close by, uh, which is good because, as we know, water turtles escape predators not only with their shell by drawing into it, but by also getting into the water. Make sure that the pond has steep edges, uh, edges where the raccoon can't actually get in the water and wade to grab fish of the turtles. I learned that from my buddy, Luke Cray, um, from, uh, uh, from, he builds ponds, uh, from Emil Cray and Son, I'm so sorry. Uh, good buddy of mine, family friend. So he builds his water features to where predators don't have a good place to hunt from. So you can rearrange some of the rocks, make them a little bit steeper um, for the raccoon, but still give a log or something in there for the turtle to come out and bask on. Next, I would recommend getting an electric fence. And you can see I've got the control unit right here. Uh, it's old, but it still works. And this fence, or rather this electric wire that you attach to the fence from these insulation devices, these little uh, insulators here that run the wire through, you attach it, and this goes around my whole two and a half acres, and that control box can do up to 200 acres um, of fencing. So it is a very powerful fence. Uh, I know because I've actually hit it on numerous occasions, and I wind up in the fetal position on the ground. It is no joke, people. And I was having a raccoon problem. I finally plunked down. It was about $200, soup to nuts, for me to do two and a half acres. Um, and what I went and did, was this. You can kind of see here the electric fence. I went and I wound up doing three different lines, okay? 
I've also got my fence sunk in the ground and I've got these wood plates here to keep uh, hatchling turtles in, but it also keeps and deters raccoons, fox, any other kind of predator from digging under the fence. Uh, and then of course these three, the raccoon is gonna come over the fence. He is definitely going to get the shock of a lifetime. And in fact, in this area, uh, I did have a raccoon when I first put the fence up. Uh, that sh I, I gotta be careful not to shock myself. You don't wanna shock yourself there. Uh, anyway, you can kind of see, again, one, two, three. Um, the raccoon came up and uh, promptly pooped himself. There was just uh, feces everywhere because it scared him so bad that he was uh, deterred. And the thing of it is, guys, is you know I don't like to kill anything. Raccoons are just trying to make a living best they can out there in the wild. They're uh, the trash panda, as you know, and they are very adaptive and they're found all over the United States. Uh, they're even found in kind of urban areas, uh, as are coyotes, strangely enough. Here are some Hyosemis grandis just enjoying themselves. There's one, and then the others are kind of heading on back to the water when I come around. But I went around this whole two and a half acres here, people, and I strung it up. And so these wily raccoons started to figure out, uh-oh, it's not so easy to get over here anymore. Um, that's definitely something I would recommend. You have to get some kind of electric fence up. They're relatively inexpensive and easy to uh, attach to an existing fence. Um, you can also kind of uh, if you make a smaller fence around the koi pond, you can actually just get a control unit that'll power a smaller uh, diameter, a smaller circumference or area than uh, a big unit. And you can just go around that particular area. But what I would recommend with that, Darren, is make sure that when you do that, you actually have, um, you can turn it off uh, during the day or when you're around enjoying the pond so you don't shock yourself. Now this particular fence I have, the um, wire actually uh, sends out a pulse so it can cut through brush. It doesn't just stay on all the time. It sends a pulse so you can't start a fire and it will in fact cut down uh, vine and things like that. That being said, here in Florida, things grow extremely rapidly. Oh, by the way, here's the backside of the new alligator pond. We just need alligators and fencing, or rather fencing than alligators. But there it is, so this is the back of the property. Still have all this space to play with. But um, you can see, we're just taking a walk around and, and you know this fence goes all over. And I went three ways around, or three times around rather. And that's all being controlled by one box. So it's a very uh, good system. It's worked very well for me. Now, of course, you have airborne predators. Uh, I know there are birds of prey out in California area as well, Northern California. Um, so with airborne predators, uh, they're really not gonna mess with a large adult red-eared slider. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that, Darren. Uh, they make and sell these sprinklers that come on, they're motion detected. If a bird lands near the pond, it shoots water out. So if you get a heron or any kind of uh, bird that eats fish, once they go near the pond, it'll actually just spray them with water and that'll uh, send them flying away because it's no fun for that to happen. You can also look into stringing up a uh, fishing line. Uh, but these are extreme cases. Sounds like you got a raccoon that's figured out that there's fish and uh, perhaps an easy meal for him. Let's see who's about. Because I know you just don't want to look at me. You'd rather look at tortoises. Here's some cherry heads and they found a leaf. This is kind of the fun thing that happens around here. These animals uh, will eat the, the, the leaves and stuff and it's just part of their natural diet, which I really love to give them. Uh, and they're here safe. And the, of course you see the size of this turtle. Um, I am able to put this out because I have the electric up. I haven't had any issues with raccoons, uh, but a turtle that size could potentially get eaten up by a raccoon or at least have an arm uh, or potentially head eaten away uh, because they're strong, they reach in, they pull the heads out, they bite them and they eat the turtle's head. Uh, and the turtles are so strong that they may just keep their arms and legs in, but not strong enough to keep the uh, head in and you'll have a headless turtle with four legs. I've seen it happen. I've seen every manner of drama happen from predation here, and it all kind of slowed down when I got that electric fence. Now, I won't say it's 100% done because every once in a while, uh, an animal will get in here, but it's very rare now. Here are the Elongata. The These guys are doing well. Really excited about them. But, you know, at least by taking uh, these evasive actions, uh, that could be good. 
and that'll help you, buddy. Uh, also, they make an alligator head that floats in the ponds. Now, I don't know if the uh, raccoons in Northern California have any uh, uh, historical memory in their DNA uh, of what crocodilians are, but here in Florida, some people will float those heads, and when a raccoon sees the head of an alligator, they tend to stay away from that water source because raccoons are, in fact, a prey item of alligators. So the raccoon knows if I come down to the water, I could potentially get eaten. In the meantime, here is what I'm up to. I'm just kind of putting together this uh, really cool new log cabin here for Darwin, Socrates, and Nostradamus because Darwin cannot fit inside there any longer, or rather she can fit, but she can't turn around because it's too narrow. But these critters are going to get much bigger. So I figured why not go ahead, build them a more spacious, house. I'm using landscape timber. Uh, this is another way I keep my animals safe. They come in at night. They're locked away uh, from the cold. We're going to have a nice roof on here. Uh, I've got to come up, obviously, quite a bit more. we got to use the rest of those timbers, bring it up a bit more than my father-in-law and I are going to make a roof that I'm able to lift up and uh, get in, sweep it out, rake it out as needed. Uh, and what's fun is doing this project, these guys have been very curious. They've been hanging around with me all day just trying to see what I'm up to, and I'm really excited for them to see their new, really cool log cabin. So what I'll do here is I'll have the passive uh, heat barrier in the way, uh, or in the form of those black pond liner strips that I've cut out, uh, as you can see. So they'll just be hanging here, and then really, really bad weather, I'll just go ahead and nail a board up to keep the tortoises in so they can't come out on those really, really cold days, if in fact we actually have any. Uh, so there you go. That's a question and answer. Darren, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for your support, buddy. Thanks for your kudos on Strava. I'm riding my bike a lot. So uh, there you go, everybody. I'm just going to get back to work here because it never stops. And with this daylight savings nonsense, there's just not enough light in the day. That's it. I'm Kenan. Don't forget to submit your questions. Go on over to Patreon. Check us out over there. And I hope you guys enjoy the channel. And I hope I answered and helped you out. And before I leave, why not just leave you with a shot of the pond and some of the pond's inhabitants? Because you know what? We love them. Here they go. See you guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll be talking to you again real soon. So long.